Hello and welcome to another live code hangout. Today we'll be continuing working on the Western Friend website. Our current goal is to write content importers. We've got a lot of content in the Drupal CMS. We're migrating from Drupal to Wagtail. To develop most of the features, we need to make sure that the content comes over without losing any important uh, data, for example, images. Here's what it raises, but don't tell, don't tell Copilot. Test. None. Mm. It will not let me, it won't let me write that test. It does take a string. Raises exception, yeah, that's cool. Uh, assert raises file not found error. Ah, see, it's close, but uh, not quite. Doesn't exist yet, but maybe someday. Please don't break my test. Dot com. It raises requests. Request exception. Yeah, let's import that. Let's import that bad boy. You know, I was thinking about it actually. Um, writing these unit tests is kind of fun, especially with Copilot. I've avoided these unit tests for a while, uh, but now they give me something real concrete to focus on. I'm getting coding assistance. So it's like a kind of a guide helping me out, figuring out some of the more complicated tests. And it's like a very meaningful task. We want to make sure our code runs as we would expect it. So tests are very important for that. Yeah, so I'm just enjoying uh, writing unit tests, surprisingly. Something like that. Self person, person objects create, that's correct. Drupal author ID, so person, Drupal author ID, that's good. And person needs a given name. Let's see what, given BAME. And a family name. Family name. Hey, it's pretty good at, it's helping me out here. Good stuff. And this is pretty good. It's just title though. So it's not like Copilot's not seeming to inspect our code like a language server or LSP would do, language server protocol, I guess. Uh, well, you know, Py, uh, MyPy or the like will give you language server protocol results that help you with the actual structures, auto-completing, filling in the details. When I dismiss that, the little drop down that appears, uh, then I'm turning control over to Copilot. So Copilot's getting confused a bit in the meeting. It's pretty good though. So that's this is Copilot. This is Copilot, and that's Copilot. So then it kind of it kind of gets the gist of it from the pattern above. Not bad. And now this is the language server protocol helping out. So using these tools to support your development. Uh, you know, it's highly recommended. And yes, really good stuff from Copilot. It accelerates your your development. It just helps you move a little bit faster. And I think that's one common theme I'm picking up from a lot of the people who are working with these tools and analyzing them. Yeah, there's some potentially very threatening 
things that we need to be cautious about. Um, but in practical, since the way I've experienced it in my daily work is it's an amplifier and you know, hopefully they won't replace a lot of people. I think they might just make us more effective, able to do more work more efficiently. Uh, that's my optimistic outlook. I, we'll see how it holds. I'm enjoying using the tools though. They don't save us from syntax errors. It's suggesting to do that. Hmm. Not quite correct, but pretty good. And we'll run one more. Getting existing meeting from database. And now it got the function correct. So yeah, you can see it's like learning from the context. It's making sort of informed guesses from the nearby context, but then once it sees a broader pattern, it's like picking up on that. See if somebody has had a similar question there. Do you see the any more instances of setup? It says aside from where it was defined. Let's try that same search in my little wagtail Django discussion here. What was my search query? I'm gonna try the exact same one. Does Django setup run before each test? Item. That's really ambiguous. I didn't quite have a good query um, for Google. Before each test. Wow. This is a personal assistant. It's just auto-generating the response. I didn't, pro, uh, you know, I didn't query Google very effectively, but I used that same uh, rather uh, lacking uh, phrase, even missing punctuation, capitalization. Got a very like sophisticated response. That's exactly what I need to know. It even describes what's going on with the code. Yes, yeah, so that's really useful. And this is why I'm cautiously optimistic about these tools. Yeah. Well, I need error classes. So, class. And I should inherit from exception. I think they should end with error, but inherit from, from exception, if I recall correctly, stylistically. There, we got a couple of these. And interestingly, exception is already in context. Hmm. That's cool. So then back to this actual function, we will be in the shared pi. We're making our code more testable while also writing test cases. These are both parts of the strategy here. The mission or goal is to increase the confidence that the code works as expected. Actually, it'll be a little bit of an improvement. I'll catch those and I can just continue the loop try. We should have logging already in place as well. So that's correct. And let's see if, let's see if uh, Copilot can get my exceptions. An object does not exist. Okay. Pretty good though. And then what's it going to suggest? Continue. Yeah. I don't want to add the error logging here. And the exception is different. Got two of them. We're going to handle both with continues. Where am I going?
Got like tag dis uh, tab dyslexia. Wait, no, just one level, please. So, uh, let's see. Can you do a union? Can you do a union of exceptions? Question mark. Capitalization. Ah, yeah. Very cool. So, yeah, we'll just, just grab them all. Catch them all in this Pokeball. Giving me a lengthy answer. That's really good. Oh, which tab? But since I've got these checks... It's kind of bracketing it. It can only return one or raises. All right. In that case, then you can be returning none. And since I don't have a counter conditional here, and it will have just continued, it's implied. That contact exists. So we're going to be a little bit careful here. I don't think Copilot, for example, can do a refactoring like this, although I have an idea. I have a clever idea. I don't know if it's clever. It probably is not even a good idea. But I'm going to paste some code into ChatGPT and say, hey, can you refactor this so it's more readable and testable? Something generic like that and see what it suggests. I have a big function in mind. We'll look at it in code coverage in a minute. And yeah, we'll just see. We'll just see what happens. I want it to be a list, so that's reducing it to a list. Map is applying this method to each and it returns a map instance, I suppose. And return, yeah, returns a map object. And then I want to convert cast that to a list of integers. It's a bit dense, but uh, get each. Other ideas of integer is what I'm after. Then the code is in good order. My goodness. Now, something ain't right. Oh, nice. I like this. They, um, they are technically integers in database but when I export them to CSV everything becomes a string and then when I re-import them I need to start thinking about proper data types again unless I use pandas but I'm removing the pandas dependency from things so everything's a string and I need to decide basically how strict I want to be with data types and at what layers of the cake I should be you know validating or casting and things like that And MyPy is just helping me out. Like, this is just telling me, hey, you're probably shooting yourself in the foot here. You didn't think about it, but this is the wrong argument type. Very cool. So type, annota type annotations, very useful. I'm glad they're coming to Python and glad to learn more about them. I've found it before, like I searched and I found it my, my input source is finish. <laughs> it's like Finland doesn't exist. Honestly, though, uh, when I lived in the United States, I didn't know Finland was a country. That was my ignorance. I mean, I kind of did, I'm sure, but didn't really register Finland as like a unique place in people called Suomi, actually. <laughs> I think in the same way that people don't probably think much about Kansas, where I'm from originally. So, you know, probably cuts both ways. The key with the greater than and less than symbols, that is there. You should type it shift plus the key. So if I do the left shift key. Alt shift. Oh, 
Alt Shift. I don't know. I don't know. It's really annoying. Hmm. All right. So what am I even needing this pipe for? I've completely forgotten. And here's another place I'll use this early return. I've got this else condition. And I like uh, stating conditionals in the positive case, if possible. So if meeting author ID is none, continue. And log. Log and continue. Then we don't need that else. Then we don't need this check anymore. Then we have just a try catch. Yeah, a little bit cleaner. Early return, early continue. Early return, early continue, early exception. You know, kind of the same pattern break, basically, if the conditions aren't met. Hey, the test passes, though. That's, that's progress. Took me a while. I had to kind of dive into some code, refactoring that code to make it to the test, but we got there and it passed. I'll just run the test against the other uh, exceptions. So now we're raising exceptions. We can test against those exceptions rather than just logging That's out. Why I'm using these tools to help me like pay attention to detail. It's really easy to lose sight of details. All right, so mainly Just some formatting stuff. Why is this suddenly appearing under my debugging console? What happened? How did this... Wait there, did I drag something? Yeah, somehow I'd... I was confused about where that went earlier. Pretty interesting, you can... I didn't know you could drag things underneath other things. Yeah, I think it's just a separate case is good here. See what Copilot says? Tear down. Actually, that's pretty good. Oh, that was pretty good. That was interesting. I was kind of curious. That uh, order of operations didn't quite work. You can't delete your parent. <laughs> That's strange. But okay, it's close. In the position in your tree, if you delete your parent, you're going to be left dangling from nothing, basically. So here's the, here's the catch equals the person author ID. Try it. See if it gives it a little bit more to go with. I'm curious. There we go. And whoops. That's correct. Yeah, you need that. That's a required field. Format. Uh, yes. And then we, so we have the person with the person ID. And then this should now return to error, I believe. Let's try it out. And command C. Command L. C. L. And run them. Ah, uh, you know, I didn't I didn't save the meeting. You have to actually edit the meeting index page ed child. That's what is missing. In order to save the meeting instance, you have to add it as a child of a parent node. Then Wagtail internally saves it and gives it some other metadata like the path and things like that. You can't just save these directly. That was the error I got at the beginning of the session. When I was writing the setup function to create the initial instances, I had to construct the whole tree in order to be able to save the, the leaf nodes. Oh boy, I'm gonna be waking up in the middle of the night tonight. One idea that just occurred to me is I can create a a base class uh, for these tests where I need a scaffolded uh, sc 
scaffolded content for various reasons and essentially define only the setup and teardown functions with those scaffolded uh, with the scaffolded content hmm I don't know if that's such a good idea then I would need to oh yeah you can just call self super yeah then I could uh, save some time there and if I create any other instances or other things that need to be set up or torn down I just use super Well, here we go. in today's live coding hangout, we've been working on continuing the test suite for our content importers. Open up another pull request here. Uh, we've not only added some tests, but we've done some significant refactors, introducing uh, some custom error classes, trying to improve our coverage reporting to include the management commands. And yeah, just generally getting our code more modular, easier to uh, test against, so we have more confidence that things are working correctly, particularly since these content importers are so useful. Thank you to everyone who's joined the live stream. Jacob Valenta, thanks for the um, tip on when I was struggling earlier to get the Colima started. Uh, thank you to Deku for subscribing or for following. And I hope to see you all around. Hope you're having a good day. Thanks for hanging out on the stream. See you later.